What is up everyone and welcome back to another video and in this video we are going to be talking about day two prospects. Welcome to day two of the NFL draft. This is where things get exciting for us Detroit Lions fans. You know sitting at sitting at three there were only so many options and with the not option of trading back is not being there there's only a couple ways we could go with it. But day two this is where it gets fun. We have three picks in this in this draft. All of our needs those players to fill those needs are still on the board which is beautiful it played out perfectly so uh, we're going to be talking about some of these players that could fit the lines for day two where we might be able to select them and uh, yeah let's get it started all right now the first thing I, we want to say is that I think this is a perfect spot for the Lions to trade back. Uh, I said it once, I'll say it again. I won't be mad if they take someone at 35, especially if it's, I think it's someone that could impact us, you know, right away. Hopefully it is. But again, I would love to trade back from 35. And I'm not saying trade back to like, you know, 120. Like, that's not helpful. No, no, no. Keep Try to keep a second round pick. Maybe move back like, you know, five, ten spots and uh, acquire another third or maybe a fourth. I think if you get a third, that'd be really nice. But hey, maybe a fourth. I'd love to trade back, you know, acquire another mid-round pick. But if we don't, you know, it's all right. But let's look at some of these prospects. The Lions are in a position where yesterday they didn't have tons of options anyways, and it went with a cornerback, which is cool. So they got they got their cornerback, and secondary secondary is looking pretty uh, pretty good now. I mean, it's not looking bad at all. Uh, safety was pretty much filled out during the offseason with Deron Harmon, Tracy Walker still here, Will Harris, uh, J. Ron Curris. It's pretty deep at the safety position. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty deep. So we could go one more, I think, for depth potentially, or maybe a guy that's kind of like a Jeremy Chin type that could kind of give you what you think you might have gotten Isaiah Simmons, just not at the same level. You could go that route, maybe mid-rounds again, third round. We'll talk about that um, if they want to. But really, secondary, other than that, it's pretty much uh, pretty much good to go. Linebacker, I think, could still use an upgrade, maybe getting another pass rusher. I think someone look at some people look at the depth and just say we're done at linebacker. I don't agree with that. I don't think the Lions... Um, Linebacker group is perfect. I think you can make it look a lot better if we, you know, stack a defensive line, it'll look better. But I don't think it's, you know, just because we're deep does not make it, I don't think, good. Uh, you're, you're putting a lot into players that haven't proven. I mean, Jared Davis has had one really good year. He's been like kind of like this. We just know, we know he doesn't cover well. We just know what that is. We know what that is. So, you know, it's, you know, nothing that we really couldn't expect. Reggie Raglan's the same type of player. Uh, he lost, lost his starting job. So, again, I, I don't want to just, you know, just go for them. Now, Jelani Tavai, I have trust in Jelani Tavai. But again, I could see another adding, another linebacker, at least for competition. So I don't think that position is, you know, solidified. Defensive line, edge rusher needs an upgrade. There is no way we can go into this season not upgrading that at all. That must have an upgrade. We need guys that can impact right now. Pass rush is still the biggest need other than offensive line. Again, cornerback's good to go. Offensive line is the big need on offense. And other than the offensive line, you're kind of just going for excitement. So really, it's just trenches. That's where we're sitting right now. We need some trenches. So let's talk about some trenches players. All right, we're going to start off interior defensive line now the lions play a lot of nickel and they're running multiple d so really if any situation if they had too many defensive linemen they could bump to a 4-3 if they wanted to right with with that they have but it's most likely they won't do that and in their corner they're probably going to stay in that nickel defense so it's most likely the lines are either going to run three down linemen or two down linemen so one defensive lineman is going to work now you really got to think here when you're adding a defensive interior defensive lineman let's say for example that's what we're expecting you know then they're in that nickel more just like they did last season and they do have three down linemen at most, most of the time. And you got to keep in mind that if Troy Lions add an interior defensive lineman, one, he either has to try to take that starting job away for Danny Shelton, and uh, Danny Shelton's going to be the backup. Now, Danny Shelton wasn't paid too much, so that's what's a good thing. Or, two, he has to have the versatility to play on kind of what you would list as a defensive end, but have that ability to move around the defensive line, kind of like a Trey Flowers does a little bit. You have to have a guy that can do that, you know what I mean? So you got you got to kind of keep in mind where you're going for here. If you do add a uh, guy that's going to compete directly with Danny Shelton, it does get you some good depth. But unless you believe that Danny Shelton can play um, on the edge, or you believe a guy, you know, like like uh, whoever you select can, then you're probably going to have to go grab another edge rusher, you know. But at that point, then you're hoping on guys like Deshaun Ham, which we have depth. It's just if you stack that interior defensive line, we know when Snacks Harrison was balling out, everybody else looked better. So possibly the Lions could be looking at this saying, okay, if we get a guy like Snacks Harrison again, we get that defensive tackle rotation looking good, then his defensive ends are going to look a lot better, which I think uh, it was proven in 2018. That's a fact, and I can't argue that. So, Definitely a lot of ways to go about this. I'm sorry, I probably confused the heck out of you. I kind of confused myself, not going to lie. But let's look at some of these players. So, starting off with the interior defensive line, Jordan Elliott. He has been way up on my big board. I took out all the players that were selected yesterday. I'm pretty sure I didn't miss any. But, ooh, Jordan Elliott's an absolute monster. This is a guy that's 
graded out the best in the SEC when it came to being interior defensive lineman. Um, you know, 2018 wasn't his best, but 2019 he was just incredible. And this is another one of those players that isn't a crazy pass rusher. I think he can do it. He's not crazy. He's more of a run stopper here. So if the Lions wanted to go this route again, he's competing with Danny Stone directly, in my opinion. Marlon Davidson, I think it has a little bit more versatility. This guy has uh, played a couple of different spots. You know, he's kind of transformed to a defensive lineman, defensive tackle most likely. So he's kind of, I think he has the ability to play on the outside. That's why I talk about him a lot. Those um, are round two prospects. I think Justin Matabike is also a round two prospect. I think a lot of these guys are going to go round two. But as we know, with all these guys, someone's got to fall, right? But Justin Matabike, uh, another defensive lineman, definitely I liked uh, out of Texas A&M. I actually had him mocked to us, I think, on my first final mock, and then I did a point two final mock. He was my first final mock I brought us to, because again, defensive line is somewhere where I think Matt Patricia is going to go for. And the rumors are true, and you know what? They were torn between Derek Brown and Jeffrey Okuda then it's probably likely they're going to go after a defensive lineman uh, next or an edge rusher next. Uh, then we got Ross Blacklock uh, and Neville Gallimore, both very good run stoppers. Again, it's really what you're going after here. I think you can grab a guy like this because I think he can make up for snacks. You know, you got the Canadian Bulldozer and Ross, Ross Blacklock. Um, and no, I have him a little bit lower on my list. But again, they're still heck of players. And I think, again, they're round two players, especially Blacklock. I mean, he's seen getting a lot of hype. Now, I think if this is the cutoff, let's just say, for example, it is works in pretty, but it may not be. David Hamilton, I think he's really, really good defensive lineman that's forgotten a lot. Got a lot of pressure for Ohio State. And uh, I think he helped out Chase Young a lot. I think Chase Young helped him out or he helped Chase Young out, one of the two. That defense line was just stacked in general. So uh, I guess if you want another, add another Ohio State body, you could. I think I'd do it round three, though. I don't know if I'd go round two with all of these other guys. I think I'd do it round three, unless I'm moving back round two. Uh, Raekwon Davis. Dude has the monster of size. If you want a defensive lineman that's, like, kind of scary, that's Raekwon Davis. Dude's six foot six. I'm not lying. He's six foot six. And in 2017, I think he had, what, eight and a half sacks? <laughs> I'm not kidding, y'all. But since then, he hasn't done that production. So, you know what's there is can he grab it back? Then we got John... And Nassini, I think that's how you say it. Uh, that's a day, That's a round three pick in uh, League Foe 2. That's round three. Really, all these guys are round three. I think Laro Lar Merchantson could be round four. But I think, yeah, there's some good defensive linemen. Now, let's talk about edge rushers. Okay. AJ Epinesa, Curtis Weaver, Zach Bonnie, Trigos Matos. Two, three, and four, and five are all edge rushers. Can we just... And you know who number one is? Christian Fulton. Think about that. Two, three, four, and five are edge rushers on the big board remaining. That's why I was excited last night. That's why I was like, look, we're on a perfect spot with this round two and day two stuff. Because look at this. If the Lions want to take a guy that's a pass rusher right away at 35, you got the option to do that. If the Lions want to, because I think the Bengals are going to tackle. If the Lions want to back up and still acquire a great edge rusher, you got the ability to do that. With the amount of defense linemen and edge rusher, you really can't go wrong when it comes to getting pass rush. You just need to get someone. I love the run stoppers. I think I'd lean towards more of a pass rusher. That's just my opinion. And I get a run stopper later and kind of pair him with Danny Shellen. But, you know, I, I'd go more edge rusher. And these, this is kind of where I'm living right here. AJ Epinesa, absolute monster. Production is off of the charts. Six foot six, 280 would be on that D-line across from Trey Flowers. Curtis Weaver, do you want to talk about size comparisons? He's the closest guy in size when it comes to Trey Flowers. Same weight, one inch taller. And Curtis Weaver's production is off the charts as well. Now, he did play at Boise State, but his production was so good at Boise State that it's like, you know, competition's bad. But he did what he was supposed to do against that competition. You know what I mean? The competition's bad. He got to dominate. He dominated. Zach Bond. I have him listed as a linebacker. But again, the versatility is here. I don't know if I if the Lions would go this route. I feel like they're going to go more pass rusher. But knowing but knowing Matt Patricia and wanting his linebackers, if the urination sample, if that thing is you know good to go and uh, it's not too much of a worry thing for Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn, this could be a definite option. You know, Zach Bond's a guy that can play different spots. He can help in coverage, which I think they need in that linebacker group. That linebacker group is deep, but not great let me just say it like that we got reggie Regland who lost the job as a starter we got jared davis who had who's a good run stopper and blitzer kind of he's solid i think you know it's a it's definitely a big year though for him uh we got giants five who i'm definitely hoping that's going to have a really big year i think he will i think he's the best linebacker we actually have we do have jamie collins so that's nice we have a nice little veteran but i think a guy zach bond could still help out you know give you a nice little mix in there but again you only can have so many linebackers on the field at once each gross matos another guy that a lot of people like Dude, the, the, both of these guys, Idris Gross Matos, AJ Vanessa, playing against great competition, made huge plays. I think they're very similar in play style. I think AJ Vanessa has talked about is really slow. I don't think he's that slow. I think he's got a quick first step that, you know, yeah. I mean, he's not the most athletic because he's so dang big. He's six foot six, but he's got that quick first step. And I think Idris Gross Matos, he's another very good player out of uh, Penn State. I think he had a little bit less production, but he was really consistent with it. There was no this. It was 
I'm balling out. I think both of them are good options. Um, Josh Uche then, I think, you know, after Josh Uche, it cuts off, and then that's round three prospects. Josh Uche, though, Josh Uche, um, again, kind of like Zach Bond, can do a couple different things. But I think Uche's a different type of player. I think he can play different linebacker spots. I think Uche's more of a guy that's going to give you pass rush. Yeah, that's right. I think a guy that can blitz. You know, Matt Patricia likes to blitz. My thought was here, okay, maybe the Lions stack up on corner, and they're thinking they can blitz a lot more this season because they didn't blitz at all last season. So maybe they had some blitzers. That could be Joshua Uche. He can blitz from the inside, play different spots. He's definitely a good option for Detroit Lions. Now I'm talking round three prospects probably here. Again, we have no idea, but Terrell Lewis out of Alabama, definitely got to keep an eye on, has all the skill set to make big plays happen. We're just waiting to see it happen. Bradley and I, you know, played at Utah, competition's kind of like this. But again, I mean, the production was there, the motor's there. This dude is an absolute monster to watch on tape. I mean, he's just, he just goes at it. And we had a virtual visit with him as well. Daryl Taylor, last season balled out. Anthony Jennings, Lions reached out to him. They called him. They were talking about him. And Julian Okora, I uh, put him on here. That was my last one on here. Okora, guy, again, that I don't know how that would work with two brothers. I don't know if I'd mess with that. And then, obviously, some other options down here. So, edge rusher, again, we're looking good in positions of need. Now, let's talk about offensive tackle and offensive lineman. Offensive tackle still looking really, really good. I think Isaiah Wilson is gone. Okay, Isaiah Wilson is gone. I, I missed that one. Isaiah Wilson's gone. Don't count Isaiah Wilson. I'm pretty sure he's gone. He went to he went 18. But other than Isaiah Wilson, look where Isaiah Isaiah Wilson was though. Look who's look all the players above him. I mean, this was off his tackles, right? So I got Josh Jones, who I think a lot of people expect the Bengals to take, which they definitely could with their new quarterback. So he may not be there. Great offense to tackle, but he fell because of other picks like Isaiah Wilson. Urza Cleveland. The athletic ability and the technique is there. It's just, the, you know, the size is kind of concerning for some people, but the athletic ability is something that some people think all, some offense tackles are going for. This would be a great option if the Lions wanted to kick Big B to right guard, or any guard for that matter, and get a guy like Urza Cleveland, put him on the tackle position because he has that athletic ability to stay in front of a lot of these quick pass rushers, like the team like the Packers have and uh, the Bears have. Ben Barch, very good offense tackle out of St. John. And then Jack Driscoll, uh, offensive tackle out of Auburn. I think he could be a round three type of pick. But, I, dude, the offensive tackle class is pretty deep as well. But, again, Isaiah Wilson isn't here. I think right here is probably day two prospects. I think here is probably round three. And I think there's some still some solid players out there. So, you know, lines can go round three and, again, address that. And interior offense line is looking really good, too. That's safety. Interior offense line is looking really good. Tyler Biedaz, Damian Lewis, Nite Mutai. And what's great about these guys, I think they go round three. They go round three. So that's why I want to trade back to acquire another mid if possible or trade back up into the third round with a future pick or something because you have so many options here to fill out needs. Tyler Biedaz, Damian Lewis. Those are day one starters. Nite Mutai is an absolute phenomenal player when he's on the field. Jonah Jackson out of Ohio State, another Ohio State player. Lloyd Cushenberry, the center out of LSU. We think he could move to a guard spot. Uh, Matt Hennessy, Nick Harris, Robert Hunt, Logan Stenberg, an absolute monster. He could be a round four. I mean, I think right here we could talk round four. We could be talking round four with Logan Stenberg and uh, Michael Onwino. And Michael Onwino is one of my top five offensive linemen this offseason. So, dude, I mean, where we need help, it's there. So I think this pick worked out very, very well for us. And I got to give the Lions credit for that one. So I think, you know, the pick turned out really well because of what's left. Now, really, if I'm being honest with you, if I'm looking for a day one starter, which I think they were, these are the only two guys that I could see that could do that. Christian Fulton and Dantzler. And if the Lions didn't love one of them for some reason or whatever it may be, then, you know, the pick looks even better than me because I don't think Diggs comes in and starts. I don't think Jalen Johnson comes in. He might. I don't know if Bryce Hall does. But I felt like these two could. But that that was kind of it. You know, that's, that's kind of... Uh, that's kind of it at that cornerback group. I think other ones are going to be, you know, sitting behind Imani and learning a little bit. So, yeah, it worked out very well. Now, let's look at running backs a little bit. Um, you know, obviously, the big three are still available. This is why I hope we trade back in the second round and move back like five picks. But I don't know if we will, but I hope we do, even if we acquire a fourth round pick. Obviously, we have the big, we have, uh, the big three still available. Uh, we do have Cam Akers here, Zach Moss, A.G., the G. I don't know what that means. A.J. Dillon, uh, Michael Hasty. Those are later round picks. But, man. It's there, man. We, we got everything in front of us after this first round. First round played out really well for us from a standpoint of watching. So uh, from that standpoint, <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's funny. Okay, and then safety. I think the Lions pass on these two. McKinney and Grand Delpit could allow a team to trade up with us. I'm just saying. But I think a guy like Jeremy Chin is a great option. Maybe like third round. Maybe Kyle Duggar, another player that can play, you know, in the box a little bit. Ashton Davis, he could be kind of a cornerback almost a little bit for us. You know, Stone. Kayvon Wallace, these are guys that I think would help out just for some depth down here. Antoine Winfield has a very, very bright future. I just don't know if he fits our defense that well. But, yeah, yeah, it's deep. It's deep. And then look at linebackers. Willie Gay just flies around the field. Troy Dye, if you want a big dude. This dude's 6'5", and he can cover. 6'5", and he can cover. If we get that, man, 
I mean, Isaiah Simmons, great and all, but this dude can cover at 6'5". Akeem Davis Gather, another guy he can cover. Jordan Brooks, uh, he actually did go as well. Oh, man, I forgot these two players. I'm sorry. I, I missed. Logan Wilson can cover, and uh, that's why I put them all on here. Don't count Jordan Brooks. He's also gone. I forgot he went first round, okay? But, yeah, I, I just kind of want to point out some of our prospects. We, we sitting pretty. Be here at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll be back live again for day number two, round two, round three. I really want the Lions to trade back from 35 to like 41 or 40-something just so they can acquire another mid, hopefully a third-round pick, maybe a fourth. But if not, they take someone, I, I'm not going to be mad. But we need pass rusher and offensive line. But really, I mean, the options are there. We've got three picks. Bob Quinn was talking about yesterday how he has the ability to move up, move back, whatever it may be. Maybe he'll use a fifth-round pick to jump up. Maybe he'll use a future pick to move up, and I wouldn't be mad about that. So there you go. Let me hear your thoughts, comments below. Who are you targeting? Thank you, Pratt, for watching, and I'm out.